I'm filling up the the uh, brewer. It's a 60 gallon brewer, but I'm just going to put 30 gallons of water. This comes from Lake Casitas, so it's got um, chloramines in it to uh, prevent bacterial growth. And so to complex those chloramines, what I use is uh, humic acid. And this is a naturally occurring product that you can actually make yourself with compost. But it is a, a, a fungal food and it's something that will neutralize the chemicals that the water district puts in to stop bacterial growth because we want to encourage bacterial growth. Um, and you know, the amounts that I put in, it's, it's actually easy to overfeed. So I, I put in, um, for 30 gallons, this gets a, a quarter cup and it took me a long time to come to that because you can put too little and too much. And this is actually also a, a stain, so I try not to get it in my clothing. And then for this brew, is, which is a fungally dominated brew, I'm going to put fungal foods in. So I'm going to put uh, kelp, organic liquid kelp, and also this is uh, from Peaceful Valley Farm Supply. I like to promote them, uh, groworganic.com. Uh, it's actually a mix of different uh, seaweeds from different sources. You know, there's diversity in foods I think is important. So it's got humate, and then it's got kelp. And the last thing I'll put in here, the last liquid I put in here is whole fish. And so this is basically fish in a blender. And, and you can actually do that, just you've got to dedicate your blender to having fish in it. And this is, this is uh, um, not something that I want to get on my clothing, because it's fishy. So this is the, um, for the air pump so that the air comes out right at the very bottom of this cone tank. And it, it's probably important to point out that this is a cone tank, so it's a total drain. Everything flows out of it. Some tanks you can get and they leave a uh, part in the tank and it's hard to clean, but this is, this is ideal. So I, I love the cone tank. And this, what they call a nipple, goes all the way to the bottom and so when the uh, when we turn the air pump on, it'll be uh, letting air out right underneath the tea bag and agitating the tea bag so that then all the uh, biology that's in the aggregates is getting dispersed into the brew. Let's go and get some uh, compost. So I love these bags. Um, I use them again and again and again and they don't fail. They've got their, what is it, biologic systems but they have a uh, 400 micron mesh, which is, is certainly large enough for all the biology to pass through it. We're gonna make some compost tea. We're gonna make it actively aerated compost tea. And what we're gonna use for the feedstock for this, the compost that I've made for this, is hopefully fungally dominated. That's what it's been designed for. So it's got quite a bit of wood chips in it, which are food for fungi. And this is much more suitable for perennials. So this, um, a, a key part for me about making compost is that you name your compost pile. And this one is called Vandana, in honor of Vandana Shiva, who's a proponent of regenerative agriculture. So we're gonna take a, a sample of Vandana and there'll be some wood chips in there. there. Might be, there's, I think I see some worms in there too. But a nice dark color, we've definitely, get, it should be the color of 70% um, dark chocolate. Uh, so not, not overcooked, but certainly has a lot of carbon in it. Probably been about three months since we started Vandana, and we've turned her uh, at least three times so that everything has gone through the center. And uh, we've looked at her under the microscope, and she's definitely got fungal hyphae in her. So I've got, I've got quite a few uh, piles. I think this is Wanda. Um, and then over here, I'm going to go and put some more samples in, all right? So uh, again, we're, we're looking for 
crumb structure here, you can see perhaps that, that this has, well, you can see biology in it, you know, macroinvertebrates, you can see our worms in there. But what we're looking for with, with healthy compost is something that looks like cottage cheese, like black cottage cheese. And so you want to have the, that crumb structure. And so we've definitely got that here. And you can see I've got chunks of wood in there. Whoops. Fung fungal hyphae live on wood. But the reason we're, that fungal hyphae are important is that 80% of vascular plants, 80% of plants have uh, a root association with fungi. And so it's easier to to tell the, the plants that don't have fungal associations with their roots. And I'm just, you know, again, I'm, these piles have all been made at different times. So taking samples from different piles ensures that I've got some diversity. And then as a bonus, well, actually I've got, uh, this is a, a meal of fish feather, kelp, soy, and alfalfa. And so that's another fungal source of fungal food. So there's quite a diversity of foods that I'm giving to this uh, actively aerated compost tea. The last thing is going to be from older worm compost. You might actually see that there's, there's some, oh yeah, there's quite a few worms there. Even, and they like to eat the uh, biology that's growing on the cardboard. Of course, worms like the dark, so as soon as you uncover them, they're off to somewhere else. But, but they are such a, a source of wonderful, vibrant compost, and particularly for cannabis growing, the uh, bacterially dominated brews are what I make and what I recommend, because we're talking about annual plants there. But still, we've got fungal hyphae in here. This is my home compost bin. I, uh, I really like to juice veggies. I do uh, work with a lot of gardens and farms, and so I, I have a lot of fresh veggies. And when I do my veggie juice, the pulp comes to my worm bin. So the uh, waste from my kitchen becomes the food for my worms. And then the waste from the worms becomes the food for my compost tea. And that compost tea goes onto plants, which then come back into my kitchen. So it's a cycle. And that's the beauty of mimicking biological systems and that's really a core part of regenerative agriculture all right i'm going to take a wee sample of this you can see the cherimoya underneath is growing its roots into it because it's very happy to have all that nice nutrition and we'll cover this puppy up and it is interesting that cardboard is a food source um, and then i've got just as Some kind of data analysis. We'll see how much we got in here. And I aim for between eight and ten pounds. Nine point nine, pretty good. So, so yeah, I am excited about this. That you guys are into uh, compost teas because uh, what this is doing is putting biology into the soil, and it's that it's that interaction between plants and soil that is taking carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it into the ground, and that's. Uh, regenerative agriculture, increasing soil carbon content. So we've got a whole bunch of biology in here and really anybody can make compost, especially the simple worm bin. Every home produces veggie waste. So it's, it's something that's not that complex to do. And here we have, you know, uh, samples of different compost in this instance for fungally dominated, uh, actively aerated compost tea. And it's just a big tea bag and put that big tea bag into our brewer. I've got the foods in the bag and I've got foods in the solution. And then I'm gonna turn the air pump on and you'll see it's got a rolling boil. And that's gonna take the biology out of all those aggregates. The crumb structure is going to be dispersed and the biology is gonna go out through the pores of the bag. And then the foods are going to allow it to grow and multiply. The bacteria will be dividing in 20 minutes. And so we build up a huge population of biology in here. And we, you know, when we take a sample of this, that we take one drop and it's amazing how much biology there is in it. So there's 30 gallons of it here. Uh, they say that there's um, more bacteria in a teaspoon of soil than there are people on the planet. So there's a huge amount of biology in here. So I'm gonna turn the pump on. 
And just a, a, a key thing about the pump is that it has to be above the brewer because if the power went off for some reason and the pump was below the brewer, then it would siphon back through the pump and that would be bad for the pump. But basically that's it. Now we just have to wait for this to brew, for the biology to grow, and we'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll put it into buckets and uh, it'll go off and be applied probably by watering it around plants, but it could also be sprayed onto the foliage of plants. Compost tea in action. It smells a wee bit fishy at the moment, but then when you're done with it, the, the, the fishy smell goes away because that food's been used up, you know? When this is done brewing, and generally I leave it overnight, and when it's done, then it can be added to the soil around about the plants, what we call a soil drench, which sounds a lot more complex than it is. It's putting it in a watering can and watering it around your plant. Around the drip line of the plant, where the, the roots are, are mainly uh, present, where the feeder roots are present, or it can be used uh, as a foliar application because sprayed onto the leaves. And leaves have holes in them. They have stomata that they can take in. That's where they take their carbon dioxide in. But a lot of it is if your plant is uh, sick, for instance, or if you use pesticides or herbicides on it, there isn't going to be any biology on that plant leaf. So it's prone to uh, infection. And if you've got good biology coating your leaves, then you're going to be fighting off that infection. So it's a way of having healthy plants by spraying it on the leaves. So you can do both. And I've seen really fast responses to foliar application of compost teas. Generally, though, the biology you're wanting to get around about the roots because the plant is feeding the soil with carbohydrates, it's taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and putting it into the ground as carbohydrates, and that feeds the biology. And so we're presenting the biology that can be fed by that, and then that biology is uh, reproducing and uh, dying, and there's feeding off each other, and there's this complex food web, and that's providing the food for the plant. So it's this synergism between plant and soil that we're really encouraging here, that we're kick-starting by making this actively aerated compost tea. Regenerative agriculture in action. For cannabis production, uh, when the plant is, is flowering, it would be a soil drench. And uh, although I don't know that it would damage the flowers, because there is uh, fish food present, then it may give it a scent and we're trying to stay away from that. You like your terpenes to be naturally produced, not tainted with some exterior food. So soil drench for cannabis that is, uh, that is flowering or near to flowering. We've had this going for 24 hours, brewing it overnight, actively aerated compost tea, and I'm ready to decant it and uh, give it to my landscaper who's standing at the end of the driveway. So. I'm going to turn the air pump off and that makes it a bit quieter and take out my tea bag. So this has got the compost that's been soaking in all these nice foods and then we just start pouring that liquid carbon out and here's our liquid carbon. So this has got uh, biology in it that we fed and we're growing up and then the landscaper is going to put this out um, or, or you know it's it's around the plants that this has been designed for this one is actually designed for uh, perennials so I mean if I was addressing it as a cannabis grower so this is um, a compost tea that you can use on your plants you can put it as a soil drench watering it on with watering cans or you can actually spray it on the plant before it's flowering. Um, so a lot of biology in this, we'll look at it under the microscope and just check what's coming in, uh, what we're growing up. But uh, liquid carbon is one way to describe this. And we're going to put this up in buckets and ship it out of here. Actively aerated compost tea. The key thing about the active aeration is that it's disrupting the aggregates of soil and those aggregates are held together by biology, by glues in the fungi and bacteria. And so we're breaking those aggregates up and distributing the biology throughout the tea. And so it's, it's not, some people, when they think of aeration, they think of uh, an air stone in a, an aquarium. 
which has maybe a dribble of little bubbles. But really what we want is an active rolling boil. And so we call this actively aerated compost tea, AACT. You know, a lot of this is fairly low tech, you know, plastic buckets with tight fitting lids, but it really works, you know. And one of these is um, a five gallon bucket's 40 pounds. And generally that's, you know, you can lift that. Then we dilute this 50-50. We might add some more foods uh, for application, but it's, uh, it's, it's not really rocket science. One of the key things about making this for me is I always am smelling it and my nose is, is a key instrument and it should smell like forest floor. It might felt, smell just a little fishy because I, I do put uh, fish product in it. It certainly shouldn't smell uh, bad, anaerobic. And so this one smells like forest floor. I brew, this is uh, 30 gallons that I do. It's actually a 60 gallon tank, but my standard brew is, is 30 gallons. But then that gets diluted when you put it on. So this is um, just about done. And really important to me is that we'll, we'll you know, between brews that I clean it thoroughly because uh, the, the bacterial buildup the bacterial slime, we don't want that to be continually present. So um, keeping it clean is important. Just somewhat ironic when you're talking about putting compost into it. So this is, is live biology in here. It's not something that's shelf stable. Bacteria uh, replicate in, in like 20 minutes. So if you store this, uh, it'll end up using up all the available oxygen and going anaerobic, and then it'll then it'll stink um, and be bad. So, really, the best thing with this is that it's brewed, decanted, and applied as soon as possible. And so, the window that I recommend is uh, the morning of. We have done some uh, work on looking at how stable it is over time and I've certainly had buckets that I've stored overnight in a cool area and it seems like it's it's okay but it's not what I recommend okay